Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another installment in my video series Nobel Women uh, in which we read a book by a female Nobel Prize for Literature winner each month. This is the last one in September. Uh, we read 11 books. There were 14 um, Nobel Prize winners, female Nobel Prize winners for literature in total, but three of them were poets and I decided uh, to not uh, do the read-along or include the poetry in the read-along. So the last book in September that we read together is Boys in Zinc by Svetlana Alexeyevich. Uh, the book was first published in Russian in 1989 and this is the English um, Penguin Classics translation by Andrew Bromfield. Uh, Svetlana Alexeyevich won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2015. Um, she's born in 1948 uh, in the Ukraine. She writes in Russian, obviously, and she writes exclusively nonfiction. Um, uh, her books include uh, a nonfiction book about uh, Chernobyl, um, about the modern uh, Soviet Union, second hand time, and about women in war, the unwomanly face of war. And this book is also uh, a book about war, about the Afghan war. Um, and her style um, is she interviews people, many, many people, long interviews, hours long interviews, which she records, and then she takes parts of the interviews. Um, not altering them, but choosing s uh, certain parts and makes a story, so to speak, out of it. I mean, it still remains nonfiction, but um, I think that the brilliance of Alexeyevich is that she is capable of taking um, these oral accounts, uh, whether it's about the Soviet Union in second-hand time or about Chernobyl in Prayers for Chernobyl, or this one, Boys in Zinc. She takes all these interviews and then makes, um, yeah, makes them their own and uh, gives a structure and storyline to it. I read this book already in August uh, together with Adam from Memento Mori, um, and we we both thought it it was really really good. Um, what she did in, in this case is she interviewed uh, soldiers, but also civilian participants in the, the Afghan war, uh, nurses, doctors, uh, but also the people who stayed at home. So uh, relatives, especially women, mothers, sisters, uh, wives of soldiers uh, that either came back not the way they went or who died. And the title um, refers to the coffins, the sink coffins, in which uh, the boys who died, the soldiers who died, were transported back um, to Russia. Now, this book uh, was published in, in Russia in 1991, and it caused quite an uproar and controversy because it was considered um, unpatriotic because it shows the horrible face of war, uh, the mostly very young soldiers who thought that they were going for a peacekeeping mission uh, to Afghanistan, and the reality was not quite as it was uh, told by the propaganda. Um, and the interviews um, reveal that in a very harrowing and and devastating way. Uh, so the the last part of the book, about a third, is about this controversy. Um, and Alexeyevich choose, uh, chose not to uh, give her own view of it, but she included um, uh, newspaper articles, for instance, by Pan America. Um, because uh, Alexeyevich was accused uh, not only of an unpatriotic behavior, but she she was sued. Um, uh, so there were is our court transcripts, but also, like I said, articles by Pan America uh, supporting her. Um, and um, both Adam and I thought that first of all, it was um, a good idea not to include your own perspective, so Alexeyevich's perspective, but that this last part was a bit long. 
um, that uh, in her attempt to um, show the support she got, there were a, there were slightly too many, you know, letters of support, articles of support, things like that. I think um, certainly now, after so many years, we would understand what happened uh, with less. But that's a minor, a minor criticism of the book. Uh, for the rest, these interviews, these voices, they blend together in a in an almost you know Greek chorus kind of style, um, making it absolutely clear for the reader how horrible uh, uh, the experience was. Um, and don't forget, the, uh, the war uh, lasted for 10 years, so 1979 to 1989, and uh, Alexeyevich started uh, interviewing people right after. So the memory was still fresh. Um, um, I, I hope um, for the people who read uh, this with me that you have the same experience. I mean, I wouldn't say I like the book because it's not enjoyable in the you know regular sense, but it, it, I think it's a it's a brilliant work of narrative nonfiction. Um, and if you haven't read it, I can certainly recommend it um, together with the other books by Alexeyevich. If you're interested in you know, the history of modern Soviet Union. Uh, certainly Secondhand Time is a very good choice, or um, The Disaster in Chernobyl, uh, Prayers for Chernobyl. Whatever book you pick, uh, I'm sure you will be as enthralled and engaged and emotionally engaged um, as I was when I, when I read uh, this one. If you read it, um, um, let me know down in the comments um, uh, what you thought of the book. Of course, I'm very interested. Uh, and maybe if you didn't, um, you might want to pick it up in the future. As I said, this was the last video, the 11th video uh, in the series. It was the 11th and last book that we read. Um, there might be an additional bonus read in November. That depends whether in October, around the 10th of October, the Nobel Prize for Literature will be announced. And there will be two uh, um, awardees uh, this year because there wasn't a Nobel Prize for Literature last year. So the, the chances are quite good that one of the two will be a woman. And if so, uh, I might organize a read-along mid-November or something um, of a book by that uh, latest 15th winner of the Nobel Prize. Anyway, for all of you uh, uh, who read along with me for almost a year, uh, who engaged in the Goodreads group or here in the comment section, thank you very much. It was such a pleasure um, to read these 11 books with you. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this series as much as I did. And I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.